What's up everyone, Niall here to bring you something a little different today. Because of the recent release of Pokemon X and Y, and all of the hype it's getting, I thought it would only be appropriate to release a Pokemon X and Y related video. As you can see from the title, this will be a video of my top 10 favourite Pokemon in X and Y. Now keep in mind, I've only played through X version once, so my opinions of the new Pokemon could easily change, as I haven't exactly used them all in battle. I mean this video might seem a little biased because of it, and naturally, I can't go into much detail regarding the Pokemon on the list. Also, I won't be including any of the Mega Evolutions, I'll save them for another top 10 video. Now keep in mind, this is my opinion, so no matter how biased it might be, at the end of the day, it is my personal preference, and I'm sure all of you viewers have completely different opinions on the new Pokemon that I do. Alright, I think I've rambled on for long enough, so be sure to grab some popcorn, sit back, relax and enjoy, because this is my top 10 favourite Pokemon in X and Y. Number 10 Kicking off the list is Dragagi. If the badass appearance alone wasn't enough to make you like him, then you should know that his type combo is that of Poison and Dragon. We've never had anything like this before, and because of it, he's the only Dragon Pokemon who poses a threat against the potentially hard to kill fairy types. Not only that, his abilities allow him to induce poison at the opponent very easily, and with his decent sized move power, he can be a potential monster in battle if used correctly. Dragalgi's name is the combination of the words Dragon and Algae, and the only way to get him is to train and evolve a Scrap to level 48, which can only be caught in Y version. So if you Pokemon X players want this, then get trained, because this is one hell of a Pokemon to have. Number 9 Definitely one of the more odd looking yet adorable Pokemon of Generation 6, Klefki is a solid example of why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Being both a fairy and a steel type means that unlike other fairy type Pokemon, Klefki isn't weak against steel types, and at the same time, he completely resists poison types. Of course this means that instead he gains other weaknesses, but not the standard ones that are usually dangerous to fairy types. Although most of its stats are average, Klefki has a nice defence and special defence, making it quite a bulky Pokemon that can intercept attacks well. Not only that, he has a very unique move pool, with some decent field moves such as Spikes, Crafty Shield and Magic Room, making it an ideal lead in competitive battling or when facing relatively powerful opponents such as the Elite Four or the Champion. Number 8 Noivern was one of the first new Pokemon to be announced, and since that day, many people have loved it, including myself. Being both Dragon and Flying, Noivern does have several weaknesses, the most perilous being Ice, which is four times super effective against it. However, because of its great speed and respectable special attack, Noivern can usually deal with these things before they pose much of a threat. Not only does he look cool, but Noivern can learn quite a large array of TMs, including the more powerful stable moves, such as Psychic, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower and Solar Beam. On top of that, he does have a few decent moves of his own, one being Boom Burst, which does a whopping 140 damage, while still retaining an accuracy of 100. Noivern isn't the easiest of Pokemon to get, as in most cases, his pre-evolution Noibat can be rather tricky to find. But there are tutorials on Google and YouTube which can help find Noibat rather easily, and I assure you, this is one Pokemon you don't want to miss out on. Number, Number 7 Xerneas When this guy was first announced, I was one of the few people who took a preference to the sexy gazelle-like beauty over Veltal. Xerneas has two forms, his neutral mode and his active mode. Honestly, there's not much point of the neutral mode considering he instantly switches to his active mode at the start of a battle but I guess it's pretty cool anyway. When compared to Weveltal stats wise, they're literally the same, so it doesn't really matter which one you have. However, some might argue and claim that Weveltal has a better move pool, yet Xerneas, being a fairy type, is super effective against Weveltal. Xerneas doesn't learn a great deal of fairy type moves, but the ones it does learn can be pretty damn powerful, especially when used correctly. Xerneas' attack, Geomancy, sharply boosts both special attack and special defense, along with a speed stat during the next turn. Plus with the ability Fairy Aura, which naturally powers up fairy type moves, Xerneas' powerful Moonblast attack can cause some major damage in battle. Number 6 Number 6 is Gudra. Now for me, Gudra is quite a special case, as I've never actually used him in battle. Now Gudra, or to be more specific, 
His basic stage pre-evolution Gumi seems to be very popular with almost everyone I know who plays X and Y. I just love how Gumi's Pokedex entry describes him as the weakest dragon type Pokemon. And yes, if you didn't already know, Gumi is in fact a dragon type, despite looking like the fusion of Gulpman and Mudkip. Now the Gudra evolution line has some pretty impressive potential abilities. The first being Sapsipper, which makes the Pokemon immune to grass type moves, and every time they're hit by a grass type move, their attack is boosted by one stage. The second ability, and my personal favourite, is Hydration, which heals all status problems during the rain. So if used with Rain Dance, then Gudra won't be affected by moves like Will-O-Wisp, Thunder Wave, Toxic, and Sing. The third and final ability is a hidden ability called Gooey, which lowers the attacker's speed stat every time they come into contact with Gudra. To me, the abilities alone are enough to make this Pokemon impressive, but I'll have you know that Gudra also has some amazing stats, especially as HP and Special Defense, making Gudra an ideal special wall. Furthermore, his special attack is also pretty damn high, making him even more capable of dealing some very solid damage. Some people have even debated whether or not to class him as a Pseudo Legendary due to his base stat totalling up to exactly 600. The only thing keeping him is the fact that he's not a dual type Pokemon. Number 5 Being the final evolution of my favourite Generation 6 starter Pokemon, it was rather inevitable that Chestnut would make it to this list. I can't help but love the look of this guy, he looks like some sort of chipmunk warrior Santa Claus, which you can't tell me isn't badass. His dual grass and fighting type is definitely a very rare combination, which leads to Chestnut being able to learn some nice moves. Although being weak against 6 different types, Chestnut can learn a ton of TMs and has both decent attack and defense along with a nice HP stat. Chestnut's signature move is known as Spiky Shield, which works in exactly the same way as Protect, but at the same time, it actually inflicts damage onto the opponent, allowing you to attack and defend at the same time. Number 4 Now when Aegis Slash's pre-evolutions Horn Edge and Dewblade were released, many people seemed to either love them or hate them. I suppose it was mainly the Gen 1ers who hated them, but personally, I loved their designs as soon as I saw them. Now with Aegis Slash, I think he takes those epic designs to a whole new level. Not only does he look like a total badass, but he has two different forms. A blade form, and a shield form. So in other words, an offensive form, and a defensive form. Of whom each give Aegis Slash a massive boost, in either the attack and special attack stats, or the defense and special defense stats. Along with some dope fresh moves, like Swords Dance, King's Shield, and Sacred Sword, Aegis Slash can be set up to be implemented in tons of different combinations and strategies. Speaking of moves, Aegis Slash's King Shield attack allows him to not only protect himself during that turn, but also causes a massive drop in the opponent's attack start. It's definitely one hell of a move to have, and I believe the use of this move is the only way to get Aegis Slash into a shield form. Now I will admit that Aegis Slash isn't the easiest of Pokemon to get, as it requires a player to use a Dusk Stone on a Dewblade, which can only be acquired during post game, unless you go for the more ideal option of using the Super's training feature. But despite Aegis Slash being a little tricky to get, his basic stage pre evolution Horn Edge can be found early in the game, and even when evolving into just Dewblade alone, he still has some very nice stats. Number 3 Okay. So the top 3 Pokemon on my list came very close. First up is Cloyeter. Now ever since I saw Cloyeter's pre-evolution Clauncher, I knew that his evolved form would become one of my favourites. I must say, I had high expectations of this guy, he not only met them, but he exceeded them. I mean just look at that big ass claw, he's like a blue lobster version of Kingler, and who doesn't love Kingler? Stats wise, Cloyeter's probably about average other than his respectable special attack, with a base stat of 120. However, what makes him truly special is his strange move pool. Cloetta can learn some beasty ass moves, including Aura Sphere and a nice variety of pulse moves. Not only that, his awesome ability Mega Launcher increases the power of Aura and pulse moves by a whopping 50%. With an ability like this, 
Combined with the right moveset, items and training, I can honestly say Kloitzer has potential to become a god in battle. Unfortunately for you Y users, he's X exclusive, but through some trading, he shouldn't be too hard to acquire. Number 2 Unlike the other guys on my list, Quilladen is a special case. I didn't pick him for his amazing stats. I will admit, for a first stage Pokemon, his defence stats are pretty decent. But the main reason I chose him was because of his majestic godlike appearance. I mean, just look at him. He's a beautiful, round, sexy piece of magic with a Rudolph nose. You know, when this guy was first announced, most people just mocked him and made fun of him because they were all jealous of how he looked. But I was that one guy who stood by him, all the way, and cherish him even now. Nothing much more to say about this lovable little armoured squirrel, other than the fact that I can also learn some pretty nice moves, like Dragon Claw, Brick Break, and Sludge Bomb. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but there's something about him that reminds me of the villager from Animal Crossing. And finally, number one. Number one on my list is Horlucha. This guy has been dubbed by many as the Whitney's milk tank of the sixth generation, opening a door to much hate towards Horlucha. However, being a player who caught and used him before it got to the stage in the game where I had to face Corina, I developed a strong love towards this beautiful bastard. I think it's safe to say that his appearance is comically amazing. He looks like the combination of an amateur superhero in a bird costume and a Lucha Libre wrestler. Holucha's best stat by far is his speed, which can even double when combined with the Unburden ability. Holucha also has a decent attack stat, which always works well with good speed especially if you have the chance to boost it with Swords Dance, and even more so when used with the move Acrobatics. Moreover, being the unique combination of a fighting and flying type, Holucha can learn some sweet ass moves. One in particular is Holucha's trademark attack, Flying Press, which is both a fighting and flying type move, meaning it's super effective against a bunch of different types. So although he doesn't look like much, Holucha is an absolute beast to use in-game and during competitive Wi-Fi battles. Be sure to catch one. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my top 10. Like I said, this is my personal opinion, so please don't hate if you disagree with me on something. If you folks have a top 10 X and Y list you want to share, then feel free to comment below, as I'd be more than happy to read them. Anyways, thanks for watching. As usual, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to comment, rate and subscribe for more. And until then, have an awesome day. See you later.